everybody. This is Bo back in the lounge. We get to have Rory Markham, MMA, UFC, and now action star from where you stand. How you doing, Roar? Great, man. How's it going, Bo? Good. Listen, you were incognito out west doing a movie for about six weeks. We talked about it a little bit off air. It doesn't sound like it was a cushy job. It was, you know what? It was, uh, I'll tell you what, it was a blast to do, but I mean, I really give it up to those actors. They work hard. When they have to work, they work. I mean, we're talking 15 hour days, some nights, and, uh, you know, the only time you got off was to sleep and get back on set. We had to push and, and complete this film on time and keep, keep it in on budget, and it was, uh, it was a great experience. It was a huge learning experience for my future endeavors in the, uh, uh, you know, in the movie world, hopefully, you know, if, if all works out well. Yeah, we always thought you were going to be in a movie. Remember we told you that a couple years ago in the IFL? We figured you were going to either be in a commercial or movie role, and there you got. Now, what is the movie about? Uh, this is uh, it's called uh, The Experiment by Paul Sherling. He's the, the writer and creator, director of Prison Break, right? Oh. So this movie is about an experiment that was conducted at Stanford University in the mid-1970s. Um, it, you take 24 average people, put it in the paper, and it says $1,000 a day, all your civil rights will be violated. <laughs> they'll show up. I know, right? Yeah, I'm signing up. Yeah. 24 people show up. It's a 14 day. Uh, it's a 14 day experiment, and uh, they take all normal, regular Joes, all males. They take eight guys, and they they make them prison guards, and then they take the other 16 and make their make the remainder of them prisoners. And we're talking just average Joes. Why do I have to listen to you? You're not a, you're not you know above me or any of that. So with that uh, premise in mind the uh experiment at stanford only lasted four days it went cr- they all went nuts and uh it only lasted four days i heard too there this uh this uh experiment was also conducted when um hitler was like experimented with the nazis and, and, and human beings but no one knows the uh the outcome of that one this movie is about how that experiment would go had it gone on a little longer than four days you know, I think we get to—I don't want to give anything away, but I—I I think we get to getting real crazy in there, and uh, it makes for—you uh, know—they made for great drama, uh, dramatic action. You know. Absolutely. I mean, when I heard the experiment was going on, there was very little being released, and we were trying to get bits and pieces and put it together. But to have you do a true life drama. Um, I, I'm not sure what the proper term is, but to have that um, as your as your basis, where you're not doing an action role, you're actually doing a drama role, is pretty impressive. And it was awesome. It gives me a little, uh, you know, a little diversity, and that that's something I really appreciate. And it was all because of my good friend Mike Gunther from LA. I met him on Bobby Z. Um, he was stunt, he was a stunt he's a great big stunt coordinator and fight choreographer, and he uh, called up his buddy Mike Smith who was heading to Des Moines to do the movie, and said, "Hey, and I've got one guy I've got to take care of, take care of, and that's Rory Markham." And at, so at first I just automatically imagined this thing to be some kind of MMA movie. Yeah. And um, I get there and it's you know I he reads off who's who's in the movie. It's Adrian Brody, Forrest Whitaker. I was like, oh my god, man, this is uh. This is has this has nothing to do about MMA. He's like, no, where'd you get that? I was like, I just assumed. And he's like, no, no, not at all, man. This is uh, this is all the way a drama. And I was able to play a prison guard. Um, you know, I was in I was in ninety five percent of the scenes with Forrest, and we, uh, you know, I, I was I was fed a few lines, a couple of yes sirs, and and good morning ladies and stuff like that. But uh, it was uh, it was cool, man. It was a uh, it was a very knowledgeable experience, and I think I'm going to take away a lot from it have that diverse character get a little dramatic reel going now instead of just all MMA. Well, Forrest Whitaker has been a very um, diverse actor. His roles go from sci-fi to, you know, biopics. He's got to be an interesting cat because I heard a lot of stuff about him. It must have been it must have been pretty intense being around him when he was doing his lines and, and setting things up. Oh, absolutely, Bo. This guy, I mean, first of all, Forrest is just an amazing human being. I see why he's so successful. He's a hard worker, obviously. But he's just a great, humble guy. And in that humility, I think that's when, that's how his characters get to be so complex, is that he listens and he doesn't, he doesn't cut anybody off. He doesn't think anything of himself. He's just in the moment. And I noticed, uh, especially during one scene, where his character takes like a turn and starts getting, he's, we play uh, uh, Forrest as our lead prison guard, and uh, his character starts taking a turn towards, the, you know, towards negative town, and you could, t- you could tell where he's starting to get hungry on power. But the where he took his character from when he first got there, I thought that this was the Forrest Whitaker, this humble man. He's carrying around the Bible, and you know, I was like, 
But he was, I mean, not that he probably, I'm sure he, you know, reads the Bible, but it, it was for his character. Right. And then I watched his character turn, and it was just, it was great to be around. It was an amazing learning experience. I thought, you know, I thought the world of him before, but now I'm just, uh, I'm in complete awe. And, well, you know, mesmerized is just, just as him, him as a person, not, you know, let alone the actor. He's a, just a great person. Well, one of the guy, actors that was on there is that I never thought as a major actor was Adrian, Adrian Brody. When I had the opportunity to watch King Kong, I really saw what a uh, gem this guy could be as an actor. The role that he brought to that ta- that movie, King Kong, was very dynamic and very different than I thought. And he pretty much went on my platter as one of the good actors out there because he did that part flawless. And I, when I saw his name show up uh, on your movie, I was like, you know what, I'm going to see that just because those two guys in it plus Rory's in it. <laughs> it's uh. It's so cool. I mean, to see two, it's like watching a heavyweight championship title fight. I've got Forrest Whitaker and then, you know, his, uh, you know, his uh, nemesis or his, the alter, you know, the other side of uh, Forrest is Adrian in this movie, a little more of a, a pacifist and as is Forrest as he starts out. But, uh, you know, Adrian is the one, the one prisoner, you know, you know, uh, civilian slash prisoner that puts up you know, a more of a fight and a rebuttal. Like, no, I don't, we don't have to listen to this. Come on, man, let's just get our money and get out of here. And, and that's when, um, you know, things start to really unravel. And uh, we, you know, us as guards start getting a little hungry on this power and become like, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, everyone kind of gets outside of their normal character self. And they got really, you know, we got really, really intense in there. You know, so it was, uh, it was cool to be around, man. It felt real. And, uh, you know, every time I'd go home, you know, I'd, I'd have to unwind from the day. One uh, one w- quick side story. One weekend, my girlfriend came down to visit me. I mean, we hadn't seen each other in weeks, and uh, it was it was the fir- the only weekend on the entire shoot we got two days off. We had Saturday Sunday off, so she came down. She wakes me up at like you know I don't know it was like twelve thirty in the afternoon. I was getting catching up on some some Z's, and she she wakes me up and I, and she's like roar, and I was like yeah what's up? I was like we don't have to be on set yet. And I was, and she's like, no, 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 you're not on the set. I was like, tell him, tell him, ten minutes, makeup. I mean, that's where I was at. I was just in this thing, living in it, and it was, it was, it was intense, man. It takes you, it takes a lot out of you. It's just as draining as a fight, no doubt. Yeah, there was a. Uh, you can speak this. This is kind of cool that you you do this because you're so well at articulating your thoughts and and everything involved. And you really are, Roar. The uh, Sylvester Stallone for years was always criticized because he really got into his roles. And he sometimes would get so into him, he would overreact and not come down. Even though Sly, I heard, is a huge comedian, he does get into his roles where a lot of people don't quite understand that because a role you can just walk away from, but you don't realize you have to be that character. You have to sell it, and if you don't sell it, you're obviously not a good actor, and uh, I'm sure you saw some of that as well. You even speak about it where you had to go home and decompress because... You've got intensity. I'm sure the director was telling you, you're not acting hard. you got to be hard. This is real. Yeah. you got to imagine those guys are your enemy, and you got to believe it. And it had to be stressful at times to really understand that you're just acting, but there's a lot involved. Yeah. Hit the nail on the head, Bo. I mean, that's exactly it. I literally, I mean, I mean, between me, you, and the public now, I, I came home and I laid on my couch for a week. I couldn't, I couldn't get out. I, I thought I was becoming agoraphobic. I was like, I don't want to go outside. I just want to keep resting. I was sleeping like, you know, 15 hours a day. It just, it was, it was, it was a really draining experience because when you're, for me, I didn't have a whole lot of lines. I had three lines in the movie. And, but when you're not acting, you still have to be acting. This kid, Travis Fimmel, he's a, an upcoming actor. He was, he was kind of my mentor on set. And he was telling me, whenever the camera is on you or, or off you, whatever, you have to be thinking of something in your head 100% of the time. Never let the ca- camera keep, catch you blank. You always have to be thinking of something. And generally, to evoke a more emotional response on your face, you should you should be thinking of something negative. I was like, really? So I'm sitting here for five six weeks thinking about negative thoughts, <laughs> and it's just it's. I can see where where Heath Ledger may have lost himself a little bit in that Joker character because he had to go so far over the edge. Um, and these actors are very serious people. This is not a craft that is just. It's that you're really not born with it. It's not something. Yeah, there are natural actors. Please don't get me wrong, but. These guys work at their craft. They go. Every one of them's got an acting coach. They're all reading their lines off set. You can really see where they where they take this thing seriously. It's not all fun and games. It's a very very serious job, and I, I like that because my current job at the UFC is very serious. So it's, it's something <laughs> a very easy segue for me in the future, if that's what you know fate has for me. 
Well, you know, I, I think obviously with the background that you have and how well you articulate and the, and the connections that you have, that's definitely a role that you're going to be going down. Um, there's a lot of people have gone down it, but back up a little.